there's stuff that I would actually rather talk about, but every time I do videos on lighting, everybody starts to snore. It's not because I'm not good at giving denotative illuminations on lighting. However, some people think that discussing lighting is, you know, taking some chick you hired from Model Mayhem is like, yeah, baby, pose like that. It's like, that doesn't really tell you anything about lighting. I recommend you like download some of the stuff from like Dean Collins who talks about speculars, uh, midtones and shadows, where they play, where they fall. Uh, it's about actually uh, not looking at somebody else holding a reflector or dropping a softbox on some cute chick's face. It's about learning what to look at in lighting. Like when you walk around the mall, things will actually grab your eye as far as uh, where the tonality of the illumination of a particular subject falls. Not only the intensity, but the percentage, and actually how uh, harsh the fall off is between the specular, the, the diffuse, the diffuse uh, to the shadow, and the intermediate gradation between those two, if there is any. The diffuse, of course, being the midtones, which is the true tonality of the subject. Um, Dean Collins actually came to our photography school a few times. I only saw him a couple times. He's dead now of cancer. Is out learning about lighting. You know, where things fall, the intensity of how it falls, uh, the quality of that light. Um, another thing people never ask me about, which is really weird, other than like recommending a speed light, is that, God, why, why is nobody, why do I get so few questions on speed lights and studio strobes? Why? I mean, that's the sexy time. You could do a hundred times more with a crappy camera and a speed light or a studio strobe than you can with a really expensive camera and an awesome lens and nothing. Um, saturation is everything. You know, in lighting control, you know, the liberation of all photographic possibilities opens up because the exposure triangle is not ISO. ISO has no connection to exposure in digital photography. It's gain in time and SNR. Gain being aperture, time being uh, obviously your shutter speed, and SNR is signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio is basically like a fancy word of saying, how good is the saturation? Signal to noise ratio is like a driving far away from your favorite radio station and starts to crackle on the radio. It's like, well, you know, you've gotten so far out of range, the SNR is bad. The wonderful thing about a studio, a studio strobe or a speed light is that since the flash duration on uh, most speed lights and studio strobes is so incredibly fast it's almost always uh, in T1 time the flash duration almost always faster than whatever damn shutter speed it is that you've picked that you're actually always able to drop incredible SNR on your camera with whatever aperture or in combo with whatever shutter speed that it is you choose obviously whatever shutter speed is going to depend on whether you have high speed sync or hypersync capabilities out of your camera, what Nikon calls auto FP, i.e. hypersync, which is nothing other than pulsed light, that saturation gives you the tonality and the saturation, i.e. the true SNR. Like having an awesome antenna and tuning in your favorite radio station and it comes in 5x5 five five and a high fidelity. You know, the best camera and the best lens is, uh, is uh, you know, way down the ladder rung relative to... Uh, sensor saturation or basically SNR signal to noise ratio you have incredible signal and you know the noise is non-existent because within the T1 time of your studio strobe or speed light you're able to drop boom not clip it you know hence we need to learn how to expose because speed lights and studio strobes stare that scare the hell out of most people and it shouldn't all they have to do is just go out with a speed light for like a half a week and they'll immediately lose all their fear and they'll have pack a speed light everywhere they could go, including events and even outdoors. Like, why do you got a speed light? It's like bright and sunny outside, guys. I want to enclose the dynamic range between my backlit subject and my ambience. You're just closing the dynamic range to increase the saturation to your sensor for the chosen signal, uh, excuse me, the chosen aperture and shutter speed that you picked. You know, you only have gain in time. Taking that window and applying speed light, of course, no one's going to pack around a studio strobe, you know, when they go do landscape photography or location or street photography, obviously, so. But you're able to actually drop that superior SNR on your sensor and make your images really pop. I mean, you give them the tonality and the saturation that the sensor actually demands. 
Um, uh, also true, that increases your inner tonals. All of that adds to uh, subject separation, contrast, micro contrast, uh, deep color saturation. Because every digital camera out there has a color filter array. It's like, if you knew that like every lens that you bought had like a filter permanently glued onto it, I mean, you'd be like, that's crap, you know? That cuts down on the light. Well, that's exactly what's occurring with any digital camera that you have. There's already a filter on top of your sensor. It's called the color filter array. RGB, whether it's bare or X-trans or otherwise. So, you know, native SNR cannot be adjusted in the camera. I mean, that's fixed at the sensor and how the image is clocked off of the sensor by your camera. That's all hardware and firmware. So, you don't want to be a slave to ambient light. And uh, I hate to use the hunting analogy because I'm not a hunter, but there are two types of hunters. I'm not saying one is stupid over the other. They're both valid. But you have one hunter that will, like, walk his ass off with a bow and arrow, for example. Let's just, like, say, I don't know, a native person, whatever. You know, they're going to sit there and, you know, stalk their prey all day long and then shoot them with the bow and arrow. I mean... That's what a photographer without the Speedlighter Studio strobe is like. You're actually slave to your ambient light. The person that packs around a speedlight is the smart hunter. Like I said, I'm not a hunter. You know, if they're hunting for deer, they don't go out and hunt the deer. They put down attractants. There's a special uh, scent marker stuff that smells like a female deer in heat. And uh, there's also this stuff that's uh, like salt lick. It's called deer cocaine. That's literally what it's called. No, I've never hunted deer, so don't attack me for deer hunting. And they put that stuff out like a week ahead of time. Because the deer will sniff it out and then they'll come there every morning. The person that, that hunts like that, he just he could be like a f person that's even fatter than me. He climbs up in a tree stand. He waits for the deer to come in and boom. You know, he doesn't even have to track them. You know, instead of uh, going to the deer, the deer come to you. And uh, that's what uh, speed light photography and studio strobe photography is. I mean, you're not a slave to having to track down or wait for the perfect lighting, you know, which is what landscape photographers are slave to. You know, they're stalking the perfect lighting. You know, you can't drop speed light on landscape photography, not most of it anyway. And uh, why do I don't get, I, I get like basically no questions about speed lights. I'm like the king of speed lights. I get so few questions on speed lights. It's kind of shocking. That stuff is so important. I mean, I get excited over lighting, but every time I talk about lighting, you know, people go... <laughs> but no, I talk about a new camera lens, you know, everybody just, uh, you know, sits up like a seal barking for a, uh, uh, a, a sardine. Or, 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 you know, <laughs> it's like it's just another lens. You know, I get excited about new lenses and cameras, too, but, I mean, damn. What about lighting? I love making videos on unique DIY lighting tools and stuff. I mean, that's the stuff that really changes your photography, not another lens. Everybody keeps calling me a gear whore, and I'm really not. You know, I only need one camera, a few lenses, speed lights, you know. It's all about lighting. I get excited about lighting stuff. But nobody likes it when I talk about lighting. It's not like I don't know what the hell I'm talking about with lighting. I've certainly got more DIY light mods than every other YouTube photography channel combined, at least the top 20 or so. So that can't be it. This is me pontificating. You know what the word pont pontification means? I'm pontificating. I'm also incredibly tired. I like warm my butt into the dirt the past few days doing uh, reviews and testing on the super awesome I said the gear whore right <laughs> on the super awesome Nikon D850 what an awesome camera damn Whew, really wow what an awesome camera so many people are going to be happy when they grab a D850 wasn't this video about lighting <laughs> it was and then it de-evolved Said the fat, the fat guy. D850 is awesome. Thanks to the folks at Robert's Camera for snagging me a D850, by the way. No, I'm not sponsored by Robert's. I had to pay for it just like anybody else. Bye.
Pam 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 p